Good morning, and welcome to Breaking Down the Unemployment Surgent, our financial literacy workshop number four. I am your moderator, Dr. Pamela Rivard jones and I serve as the Assistant Chief Administrative Officer for the City of Baton Rouge under the Office of Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom. So today we have an exciting webinar planned for you. The topic, again, is all in regards to our unemployment surgeons that we've seen in recent weeks. I'd like to begin by going to the first introductory slide. And it's all about Financial Literacy Month. Um, as many of you may be aware at this point, especially if you've joined us on some of our previous workshops, April is Financial Literacy Month. And there are a lot of surveys that are being done and a more recent survey that was done just last week by the National Endowment for Financial Education finds that nearly nine out of 10 individuals, Americans, 88% uh, said that COVID-19 crisis is causing stress on their personal finances. So more than ever, we're seeing the need for financial literacy for individuals to pull back and to learn how to actually manage and budget their finances in a very different way. Uh, the survey goes on to say that more than half, 54% of Americans say that they're worried about not having enough money saved at this time, while almost nearly half, 48%, are worried about their ability to pay bills. And we're seeing that again across the nation. Um, financial literacy cannot predict, nor is it a remedy for this particular crisis, but what we do know is that financial literacy plays a key role, a pivotal role, in the economic recovery, not only of our country, but also of our capital city, Baton Rouge. And so I thank Mayor Broom again for her vision of starting these financial literacy um, webinars for us going consistently with these, having different partners on. And therefore, I would like to go into our next slide, which shows our partners and our purpose. So welcome, and once again, the purpose of the financial literacy workshops is to aid in building awareness. That's the first purpose for a financial literacy month also and then to discuss effective financial education tools and to discuss how that stimulus paycheck um, to the public was being rolled out. So that was the impetus for starting these webinars. The general focus, however, for this workshop, which again is the fourth in the series of six, is to provide information on the overall surgence of unemployment and its impact upon large and small businesses here in the local Baton Rouge area, and to do a somewhat overview of the qualifications of individuals and who can be uh, considered qualified. The filing process, we'll discuss the weekly benefit amounts, the pandemic unemployment assistance requirements. We'll talk about benefits and taxes on unemployment, and we'll talk about payment options. And then towards the end of our presentation, we'll discuss appeals along with information on legal assistance. So that is what we're covering today. And here are our partners. Our presenting partners, we're very grateful to have Liz Smith, who is going to speak on behalf of BRAC today. Unfortunately, Mr. Adam Knapp is unable to join us, but we thank him so much for being able to have a presence with BRAC on the call today. And thank you again to Liz, who's joining us. We also are joined by Mr. Daryl Lewis, who serves in the city parish as a WIOA chief administrator, and he is representing WIOA and Employee BR. We also have our third presenter, who is Ms. Julia Jack. She is a staff attorney representing Southeast Louisiana Legal Services. And thank you to Julia. I will wrap up the presentation with Q&A and give some additional information about our remaining workshops. So with that being said, I'd like to go to the next slide, which gives our workshop content. Part one, our special guest speakers, again, are representing BRAC. 
Part two will be the unemployment process, and Mr. Daryl Lewis will lead us in that. Legal services is part three, Ms. Julia Jack, and then, as I mentioned, our Q&A session. So let's get started. Part one. So Baton Rouge Area Chamber, <clears throat> pardon me, um, as I mentioned, Adam, <clears throat> pardon me, is not able to be with us today. So Liz, we thank you for joining us once again. Liz serves as the Senior Vice President of Economic Competitiveness for BRAC. And I'd like to uh, introduce Liz. She's our special guest presenter today. And again, talking just a, a broad overview on the overall impact of unemployment on businesses as a result of COVID-19 and topics. Thank you, Liz. I will turn it over to you now. Thanks very much, Dr. Jones. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with everybody this morning. And let me please apologize on Adam's behalf. He is serving on a legislative task force that is trying to figure out how we will reopen our economy. And they have gone over their time allotted for this morning. So um, I'm going to talk about the um, what's going on with businesses, particularly small businesses um, and, and uh, unemployment considerations that need to be taken into account. So especially for those of you who are on the line who are small business owners, um, uh, I hope that I can give you a little bit of useful information. So, you know, first I just wanna talk a little bit about the general economy. We have been working um, to ensure that we talk with as many of our members over here at the chamber as possible to find out what's going on with their businesses. And it will be no surprise to you, I know, to hear that the hospitality sector, sector and the leisure sector have seen major disruptions coming from COVID-19 with 90% of those investors telling us that they've seen major disruptions. We've seen a 77% drop in revenue for hotels um, and we've also seen on the other side of things in a different sector, manufacturing um, is being hit as well, right? So consumer fuel sales are down 37%. We're all following nationally the drop in the price of oil, which is not only impacting the petrochemical industry, but it's also in turn then impacting the construction industry, engineering industries, and other industries. These are sort of the backbones of our economy here in the Baton Rouge region and in Louisiana. And so it is no surprise that Wallet Hub this morning just said that we are the uh, second most impacted uh, state in the United States when it comes to unemployment. Um, in Louisiana, we have seen that over 340,000 people uh, have filed for unemployment insurance. And here in the capital region, just since mid-March, uh, there have been 64,000 claims for unemployment insurance made. Um, the good news is, if there is good news, that the rate of new unemployment claims does seem to be going down. And so what we are hoping is that means that we are leveling off, um, but really that honestly remains to be seen. So for those of you who are small business owners, um, there are a few things that we really think that you should do and that you should know about when it comes to unemployment insurance. So First is, look, if you are in a position where you have to lay off or furlough your employees, give them information about unemployment insurance. Unemployment insurance has been expanded dramatically both uh, by actions of the governor under his executive orders and also by federal legislation. And so more people than usual are eligible for unemployment insurance. Um, that includes folks who are 1099 contract workers, people who are not fully unemployed, but who have uh, had their hours cut or have had to take unpaid leave because of COVID. There are quite a few uh, larger groups of people who are eligible for unemployment. Send them to the louisianaworks.net website so that they can fill out an application and access those benefits. It's also important for you to know that the governor's pro proclamation has alleviated some of the costs of UI benefits from companies and nonprofits. So your um, UI tax accounts um, are not being hit with these additional unemployment insurance benefits. That's important to know. They've also extended quarterly wage, re wage reporting deadlines and UI taxes deadlines to June 30th, so you have a little bit more time to deal with the paperwork end of all of this. Um, it's important to know that you do still need to file separation notices. 
um, and you have three days to do that. And then finally, it's important to know that if an employee leaves your company for a non-COVID related reason, you do need to let the Louisiana Workforce Commission know about that as well. Because if they leave for a non-COVID related uh, situation, they are not eligible for the expanded pandemic unemployment insurance. So you see up on your screen um, a timeline, and I wanted to talk about this timeline as well. So this is the big issue that businesses have been talking to us about. Um, when we are calling our members, and we have about 1,500 members across the capital region, when we are calling them and asking about what is going on with unemployment insurance, what's going on with the Paycheck Protection Loan, what's going on with their business, this is a problem that they are very concerned about, and it is the interplay of the Paycheck Protection Program and the expanded unemployment insurance. Um, I read an article this morning on CNN that I think really explained it very well, and it was about a woman in Washington State who is a business owner, a small business owner. She employs about 40 people. She owns two day spas. And she received her Paycheck Protection Program loan after furloughing all of her employees. So she got her 40 employees onto a virtual call like we're doing right now. And she was very excited to tell them that she was going to be able to bring them back onto their payroll by using the Paycheck Protection Program loan that she had received from the federal government. And her employees, um, a, a shock to her, but many of her employees were very unhappy that they would be asked to come back onto her payroll. Not all of them, certainly, but many of them. And the reason for this is that the larger amount of money that is available uh, via the expanded federal unemployment insurance is more generous in some cases than weekly wages that are being provided by some companies. This is particularly true here in the capital region in those industries that have been hit the hardest, leisure and hospitality. So right now, the federal government is offering a $600 per week supplement for unemployment benefits. And that is on top of the Louisiana unemployment insurance, which can be up to about $245 per week. So at a maximum, uh, the UI benefit every week is about $845. And so there are um, some companies out there who are struggling with whether or not they should be offering employment back to their furloughed or laid off workers. Um, on the one hand, they are struggling with it as a, um, a business decision. They want to make sure that they can keep their businesses going. They wanna make sure their paycheck protection program loan and the liquidity and forgiveness that it, apply, it provides doesn't run out um, before the stay at home order is lifted and they can start getting back to business. On the other hand, they feel a moral obligation to make sure that their employees are making as much money every week as possible. They all want their employees to be taken care of. And right now, there is a possibility that the unemployment insurance benefit brings in more money to an unemployed person than does being on payroll at their employer. Um, and so this is something that small businesses in particular um, are very much struggling with. And so what we laid out um, on this graphic in front of you is sort of a timeline. On the top of the line are all of the deadlines and important dates related to the Paycheck Protection Program loan and unemployment insurance. So it shows when the federal supplement kicks in on March 29th. It shows when it ends on June 29th. And then it shows when the original PPP loan application became available on April 3rd when it became available for independent contractors and the self-employed on April 10th, um, when the federal UI supplement began being dispersed, when the funding for the PPP ran out, and when the last day of funding um, or application is available. On the bottom of the graphic, what you see in the red is a, a hypothetical PPP application. And what you see there is if you apply for your PPP on the first day that money became available on April 3rd, you'll have your first draw potentially around April 15th. And that kicks off an eight week period during which you need to be um, making all of your expenses that will be forgivable, forgivable eligible expenses. 
So that means that if you furloughed anybody or you laid anybody off, you need to bring those folks back. You need to reinstate their former salaries and wages. You need to start paying them those former salaries and wages in order to take advantage of the forgiveness that is offered by the PPP. And that's where that decision, that struggle decision comes into play. Is it better for my employees for them to stay on unemployment insurance benefit, or is it better for them to come back and work for me and get paid their wages through the PPP? Because that PPP may run out before a stay at home order is lifted. We don't know. That could mean that they would have to be furloughed or laid off again. Um, and so there are a lot of difficult decisions that have to be made here. They'll have to be made very context specific um, for the employers and the employees. And one thing that's sort of um, causing a lot of difficulty in all of this is that the communication between the employer and the employee is a little bit impeded right now because technically the rule is that if an employer offers employment back to an employee, that employee, if they turn it down because UI is more generous than wages, that employee could potentially lose their eligibility for unemployment insurance. So it's a conversation that some employers don't even want to have with their employees because they don't want to put those employees in a position of potentially losing their uninsurance benefits, their employment insurance benefits. So it's a very complicated thing that uh, many uh, small businesses are struggling with. There is no clear answer, but what we wanted to do is try to bring it to the forefront as a policy issue um, and make sure that small businesses uh, were aware that this is something that they needed to consider. So with that, I'll uh, end my comments. Liz, thank you for sharing that information, very detailed. I know you and I and Adam had an earlier discussion this week and we were actually talking about the last point that you brought up. And I would just wanted to repeat that because I know a lot of questions have come in in regards to who's the decision maker in terms of um, the employee losing their um, employment benefits if they make a decision to stay on unemployment as opposed to going back to work? So that would be done for the Louisiana Workforce Commission. They are the administrator of the program, so they would make those decisions. Um, and it would really only be kicked off if an employer were to report to LWC that a refusal of work had taken place. As of uh, now, I don't believe that there is a reporting mechanism in place for this at LWC, which of course further complicates the issue. Okay, thank you for that. Liz, a question has come in. Um, the individual states, um, I am a small business owner with two small businesses, both have closed. I am thinking to seek out the assistance of a consultant. What is your advice on that? I think uh, I would want to know more about what the consultant would be asked to do. Um, I will say, for instance, that the Paycheck Protection Program um, has a provision in there to allow for small businesses who are seeking to access the loan to utilize what's called an agent. That could be a consultant, it could be a lawyer, it could be an accountant, a CPA. Um, but to utilize an agent to help them make these decisions about the PPP and ultimately to file an application for one and to have banks bear the cost of the assistance that's provided in filing that application. Um, but without a little bit more detail, it's sort of hard for me to give any guidance. Another question, Liz, is in regards to a comment you made. You noted PPP may run out. Is there a timeline for this? Yes, so the PPP did run out on April the 15th. The $349 billion worth of funding uh, did run out on April 15th. However, yesterday, the Senate passed uh, a replenishment of the PPP. Um, I think it's an additional $310 billion for the program. It is expected to be voted on in the House uh, today. 
Um, I think that the House is back in session as of about an hour and a half or two hours ago, and we do expect there to be a decision today, and the President has indicated he would sign that bill. So very quickly, um, potentially tomorrow or next week, early next week, um, that money will become available again, and so people can start accessing those applications. Uh, one and one additional question, Liz, has come in. Um, as a small business owner, I am new to the United States and not sure where to get started. Could you kindly advise on what my first step should actually look like? Sure. So uh, what I'm going to say is I want to offer everybody the opportunity to please visit BRAC's recovery website. So. It's BRAC.org slash recovery. And on that website, you will find what we have given as guidance, uh, five steps that every business should take. And among those steps are you should call your bank or your mortgage lender, actually call your bank and your mortgage lender if they are different, and ask them what they can do for you. Um, you should look at the PPP or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan and see if either of those loans make sense for you. You can find detailed breakdowns of those two loans on BRAC.org slash recovery. We have tables that kind of lay things out side by side. There's a lot there. Um, you should be talking to your creditors to see if your creditors are offering any sort of deferment on um, collecting on any loans that you may have. Um, and if you are in a position where you have to lay off or furlough people, like I said earlier, give them information about unemployment insurance um, so that they're not left without any income coming in. Thank you for that, Liz. Um, just as a final question, I want to touch on this because you started talking about the number of claims that were filed. Um, 64,000. What was the time frame for that number, Liz, that you mentioned, the 64,000 claims in Baton Rouge? Sure. The, um, the 64,000 new claims for the region, uh, for the Baton Rouge metro region, so it's the nine parish area, um, started the week ending March 21st and went through the week ending April 11th. Okay, and you mentioned that you're, you're starting to see a flattening of that. Do we anticipate that number to go up much more? It's hard to predict. So, you know, the 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 week of um, the week of March 21st, there were about 13,000 new claims. The next week, there are 18,000. The next week, there were almost 19,000. It has dropped down the week of the 11th to 14,500. So it started to go down a little bit. I think it's going to depend on how much longer the stay at home order is in place and to what extent we start to sort of baby step back into the economy being open. Um, if the stay at home order remains in place as it is, um, I would anticipate that while we may not get back up to a, a number of 18,000 new claims in a week, the, uh, the amount of claims will, will drop down very slowly. Um, we want to see that number dropping down much more quickly, and so, you know, hopefully our, our leaders and our healthcare system will be able to help us get to a point where we can start stepping back into a more open economy. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Liz, for answering those questions. We certainly want you to stick around through the rest of the presentation. We have a, a final Q&A at the end, so your support with any questions that come up. We also want to encourage those who are on the workshop to feel free to add questions in the chat room and we'll be sure to uh, present those at the end also. So Thanks at so this much. time, I'd like for us to get into some of the meat of our presentation and we are privileged to be able to have Mr. Darrell Lewis who is going to facilitate a discussion on uh, employment unemployment and the process that you should go through. Um, Mr. Lewis is the WIOA Chief Administrator, as I mentioned, and works with Employee BR, which is through the City of Baton Rouge. I do want to um, mention that this presentation is not in any way representing LWC. 
we are just sharing information. And Mr. Lewis will also have a disclaimer in regards to that. But thank you so much for being able to facilitate this discussion. And let's turn it over now to Mr. Lewis. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a, as, as Dr. Jones mentioned, my name is Daryl Lewis, and I am the WIOA Chief Administrator for the City of Baton Rouge, Parish of East Baton Rouge. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to provide with to you some unemployment basics. However, as Dr. Jones mentioned, I must uh, add that unemployment insurance, or UI as I'll refer to it, uh, is not a local function, but is instead a state program. In Louisiana, UI is administered through the Louisiana Workforce Commission, or LWC for short. Uh, today, I will simply be providing information about unemployment insurance, but any questions, concerns should be directed to LWC. With that being said, uh, let's take a look at uh, the unemployment uh, insurance overview. UI payments or benefits, as they're referred to, are intended to provide temporary financial assistance to unemployed workers who meet the requirements of Louisiana state law. The funding for UI are derived from taxes that are paid by employers, and that in Louisiana, UI benefits are not deducted from any employee's salary. So qualifying, how do I qualify for unemployment insurance? Well, to qualify for UI, the reason for your separation must be through no fault of the applicant. The applicant must be able and available to work, and the applicant must have earned enough wages in the base period. So base period, and I had to do a little research to kind of understand base period myself. So the base period is the period of time that is used to determine your weekly benefits. The benefits are determined on the wages earned in covered employment during the period of time during that period of time or what's considered the base period. So LWC considers the first four of the last five completed quarters immediately preceding the first day of claimant's benefit year to be the base period. I know. Um, as I read that, I got confused. So, how, 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 so let me simplify for you. If you filed a claim prior to April 5th, 2020, your base period is October 28th, through September 2019. Sorry, October 2018 through September 2019. If you filed a claim on or after April 5th, your base period is considered to be January 2019 through December 2019. So if you filed a claim, say on April 6th, LWC will review your wages you earned in covered employment from January 2019 through December 2019 to help determine your weekly benefits. So let's take a look at weekly benefits, benefit amounts. For regular state unemployment insurance, the minimum weekly benefit amount in Louisiana is $10, and the maximum is currently $247. For eligible claimants, the weekly benefit amount will be awarded within this range based on the wages earned during the base period. Note, the total amount of unemployment insurance benefits payable is equal to 26 times the weekly benefit amount. Now, for those whose employment status has been infected by COVID-19 but wouldn't regularly qualify for regular state UI, I'm talking about individuals such as folks that may be self-employed, business owners, 1099 contract employees, gig workers, these individuals may qualify for what's called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or PUA. The claim process for PUA is the same as for regular UI. If a, when, when you submit that, that UI claim, if it, if it is not approved through regular UI, LWC will review it to see if you're eligible for PUA, or Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. For qualified recipients, of the pandemic unemployment assistance, the minimum weekly benefit amount is $107, and the max is $247 for a maximum of 39 weeks. To receive your, your weekly benefits claim, LWC requires claimants to complete weekly certifications. Weekly certifications can be filed online at www.louisianaworks.net or by calling LWC at 
783-583-5567. LWC re recommends certifying online for faster service. Now, if a claimant fails to complete the weekly certification, they will not receive benefits for that week. Weekly certification deadline is Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Also, as a result of the current pandemic, the customary week of waiting and the weekly job search requirements have been suspended until further notice. Federal Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. This is a provision of the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act. It provides an additional $600 a week in benefits to anyone who is qualified for at least $1 of regular state UI benefits or the pandemic unemployment assistance benefits. This includes self-employed and 1099 workers who are normally excluded from receiving state benefits. This additional weekly benefit amount will be available from April 4th, 2020 to July 25th, 2020. Now, before we go any further, I would like for us to take a few minutes to view a short LWC video on how to file an initial claim. So I hope you all found the video to be informative. For those of you who would like to view this video again, the video can be found on the Louisiana Workforce Commission's homepage at laworks.net. Again, that's laworks.net or on the Louisiana Workforce Commission's Facebook page. Also, as seen in the video, if you are unable to log in to your hire account because you've forgotten your username or password, you can email LWC at hire at lwc.la.gov. Uh, you will want to place, uh, you want to type password reset in the subject line and include your name, phone number, and last four digits, digits of your social security number in the body of the email. Again, the email address is hire, H I R E, at lwc.la.gov. Now, before we pause for the, for the video, I was speaking to you all about the pandemic. Unemployment Assistance, or PUA, which allows individuals who would not typically qualify for regular state UI to receive benefits. Let's take a look at the eligibility requirements for PUA. So to qualify or be eligible for PUA, uh, the, the eligibility requirements include having been diagnosed with COVID-19 or experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 and seeking a medical diagnosis. Uh, having a member of your household who has been diagnosed with COVID-19, providing care for a family member or a member of your household who has been diagnosed with COVID-19, having a child or other person in the household for which you have primary caregiving responsibility who is unable to attend school or another facility that is closed as a direct result of COVID-19, and that school or facility, facility is required for you to be able to work. Um, if you're unable to reach your place of employment because of quarantine imposed as a direct result of COVID-19, un unable to reach your place of employment because you've been advised by a healthcare provider to self-quarantine due to concerns related to COVID-19, uh, you are scheduled to commence employment and do not have a job or are unable to reach your job as a direct result of the current pandemic, you have become a, the breadwinner or a major um, support for a household because the head of the household has has passed or died as a result of COVID-19, uh, you've had to quit your job as a direct result, or your place in employment is closed as a direct result of the current pandemic. Please note that uh, PUA is generally not payable to individuals who have the ability to telework with pay who or who are receiving paid sick leave or other paid leave benefits. However, individuals receiving paid sick leave or other paid leave benefits for less than their customary work week may still be eligible for the PUA benefits. So let's talk about the, the length of claim. For a regular state UI, the benefit year is 52 calendar week period immediately following the Sunday of the week in which the claim is filed. During the benefit year, the claimant may draw a weekly benefit amount for each week
they're eligible until the maximum amount showing that determination is exhausted. And remember, for regular UI, it's up to 26 times the weekly benefit amount. Now, if the maximum amount is exhausted before the end of the benefit year, the claimant must wait until the end of the benefit year before he or she can file a new initial claim against Louisiana. But as a result of the current pandemic, if someone has exhausted the maximum amount of benefits allowed under regular UI, the Extended Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or EPUA, provides for an additional 13 weeks of benefits. So we've been speaking of payments of benefits, and, and now we'll talk a little bit about how you, how you will receive those payments. In most cases, your payments of UI benefits are made through the use of a U.S. bank debit card or through direct deposit. If the, debit, if the debit card is the payment option you select, the debit card will be sent to you by mail. If direct deposit is the payment option you select, you must complete the direct deposit information either while filing for your UI claim or by going online at www.louisianaworks.net and selecting direct deposit. Direct deposit information is only accepted online for security reasons and LWC will not accept banking information via phone. So as we all know too well, that when there are payments, there are taxes. No difference with unemployment benefits. Unemployment insurance benefits are subject to federal income taxes of 10%. You can choose to have your taxes withheld from the benefits or to pay those taxes at the end of the year. If you would like to change your original decision of whether to have taxes deducted or not, you can do so by calling 1-866-783-5567 or logging into your higher account. All claimants will receive a statement, a form IRS 1099-G at the end of the year for any unemployment benefits received during the calendar year. Now, speaking of your higher, account, higher accounts, it's important that contact information and your higher accounts be accurate and up to date. Be sure to update your home address, phone number, and or email address in your higher account if and when these contact uh, information changes. The changes can also be made by contacting LWC by phone. Last but not least, I would like to make you aware of the right to appeal. Individuals have the right to appeal any non-monetary determination or a monetary reconsideration LWC makes with respect to your benefit rights. There are three ways to file an appeal. One is online through your higher account. The second would be via mail. You can mail to LWC Appeals Unit, PO Box 94094, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70804-9094. And then thirdly, via fax. And the fax number for appeals is 225 346 60 Seven, seven. With that, I'll conclude my portion of the presentation. And again, I thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, for that detailed information. Very helpful. And I'm sure we'll be able to dig in a little bit more during our Q&A. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Julia Jack. She is a staff attorney for Southeast Louisiana Legal Services in Baton Rouge. She previously worked in New Orleans at the New Orleans office from 2015 to 2019. And in 2019, she began working as an administrative law judge for the Louisiana Workforce Commission. In March of 2020, she returned to SLLS to work with the general within, pardon me, the General Litigation Unit, focusing on employment, consumer, housing, and also foreclosure cases. We are delighted to have Julia with us today. Thank you, Julia, for presenting, and I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you for having me, and good morning um, to everyone. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how legal aid can assist when, um, when people have difficulties with uh, going through the unemployment process. Um, when can you get help? So if you receive any type of um, unemployment benefit denial, 
you can give us a call and uh, receive assistance. And so that's any type of benefit denial, um, whether it be your weekly benefit denial, initial application denial, um, monetary determination. Um, if you are approved for unemployment benefits and you have not yet been paid, so if you're just having a little bit of difficulty navigating the system, you submitted the application, you received the monetary determination, um, but you just, you're not receiving those weekly benefits like you thought you should, um, you can contact us for, for assistance. If you earn wages, but you were not paid either before or during um, when the COVID-19 pandemic first broke out, um, if you earn wages, you were working for an employer and that employer just has not, um, they haven't paid you, we can definitely attempt to get you that, that payment and get you those wages. And if you are not receiving uh, unemployment benefits because, because of an overpayment, meaning that you have applied, you submitted your application, and you were given a monetary determination that you will receive a certain amount every week, but then you're not receiving benefits because the Louisiana Workforce Commission has determined that you have an overpayment from a previous claim filed that has to be paid back before you receive benefits. Next slide, please. So frequent reasons to appeal, any disqualification that you receive, you should have a, a appeal rights attached. The standard appeal deadline is typically 15 days from the date of the determination. Um, any monetary determination, the monetary determination is uh, what Mr. Lewis referred to when he said that for state benefits, it's anywhere as low as $10 a week, uh, all the way up until $247 weekly, and then for the federal benefits under the CARES Act, it would be $101 a week to the max of $247 a week. If you receive a monetary determination uh, between those different numbers and you don't agree with that monetary determination, you can definitely appeal that, submit any proof of additional wages earned during that base period, and you can have your uh, monetary determination recalculated. Overpayments typically have appeal deadlines attached. Um, it, it's best that you submit that appeal, even if the appeal deadline has passed, because in a lot of situations, you may not have known about the appeal deadline, excuse me, you may have not known about the overpayment until you submitted this new application, and you just want to have all the information um, available to you so that you can understand what the overpayment is for and see if you do have uh, appeal rights that have not, um, that have not prescribed. And then weekly benefits, benefits disqualification. So as Mr. Lewis also said, every week you'll have to submit a weekly certification. Um, if you're denied any week of benefits based on that weekly certification, you have appeal rights attached to that denial. Next slide, please. Issues related to COVID-19. Um, some of the biggest issues are part-time work, meaning that you, you may have lost work, your hours may have been reduced, or if you were working uh, two or more full-time or part-time jobs, and some of those jobs uh, you've been furloughed or you've been terminated because of the COVID-19, but you're still working part-time, any of those wages that you receive will need to be reported um, to the unemployment office on a weekly basis. The unemployment office will calculate those wages and make a decision as to whether you'll still qualify for that weekly, uh, that weekly benefit amount based on your monetary determination. Um, any wages that you earn in excess over your weekly benefit amount, you will not receive a, a weekly payout. So for example, if your weekly benefit amount has been determined to be the max of 247 a week, but you're working part-time and you earn $300 this particular week, then you will not receive that $247. In addition to that $247, if you qualify for the $600 extra under the Federal CARES Act, you won't, um, you won't receive that $600 either. Um, overpayments. If you've been determined to have a state overpayment, benefits will be used to pay back on that overpayment meaning that the $247, for example, if that's what your monetary determination is, and you have an overpayment of $1,000. Each week that you claim benefits, 
the $247 that you would have been receiving will be uh, used to pay back that $1,000 overpayment. Um, and you will not receive the ad additional $600 for any of those weeks. However, it is very important that even if you have an overpayment, you keep filing your weekly certifications, although there will be no benefit uh, payout, just because once you, once you pay back the overpayment, you will begin to receive you will begin to receive weekly payouts. So using that example, that if your payment, if your overpayment was for $1,000 and you're receiving the max of 247, when you file weekly benefit certifications for four consecutive weeks, it should pay back majority of the $1,000 overpayment. And then in week five, you will begin to receive um, a weekly pay payout. So it's very important that even if you have an overpayment, and you're not receiving benefits right now, that you continue to file your weekly certification. And then the extended benefit under the Federal CARES Act. So for those who have exhausted the, who have exhausted, uh, the 26 weeks of benefits that they can receive under the state benefits, the, as Mr. Lewis said, the Federal CARES Act will extend your weeks of benefits by 13 weeks. As of right now, we have not received word as to how that is being implemented. We are getting um, a lot of calls and a lot of clients who haven't been able to access the 13 weeks of um, benefits, but when uh, the Louisiana Workforce Commission is able to implement that, it will be retroactive. Um, next slide, please. And so legal assistance is available for anyone who needs help. You can contact Southeast Louisiana Legal Services, our COVID hotline by dialing 1-877-244-7871. Again, that's 1-877-244-7871. The hotline is open from week is open on weekdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And for anyone who's having access to um, applications, um, who's trying to fill out an application, but maybe the higher website isn't working for you to fill out those applications. Uh, the governor did recommend that applications be, if you have access to online applications, that they be completed um, during, I guess, outside of the peak hours, which is between 10 p.m. at night to 4 in the morning. Um, and that'll conclude my portion of the presentation. And so um, I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Julia. I appreciate that and the information that you shared especially the fact that your services at uh, Southeast Louisiana Legal are free. Um, and I'll go to the next slide, but I definitely want to reconnect in terms of questions for you in regards to the services you all provide. Just as some additional information, when I first started the presentation, I began to talk about a survey that was conducted last week. And that survey, again, was by the National Endowment um, for financial education. And that survey says, like, with the news that one in 10 Americans is now seeking unemployment benefits, it's clear that people are going to worry about job security, that, that it's escalating now. And some of the findings in this survey is that 28% say that they're stressed over their job security, and rightfully so at this time. Three quarters of Americans are taking steps to adjust their finances, meaning to create a budget or to simplify their spending habits due to the outbreak. In addition, two in five note that they have cut their expenses. Some examples of that would be um, declining cable or changing perhaps their phone service, their um, their AT&T if they're using that particular network in order to have a cell phone. So they're trying to, to cut specific expenses. 26% are also putting off major financial decisions. Most individuals who are in the process of maybe looking to purchase a new or used car have chosen to just wait or even to purchase a home. 22% uh, have increased their contributions toward savings. And that number seems to be a bit low when you think about the 22%, but we're going to touch on our next webinar about saving for an emergency fund 
and the simplicity of being able to start an emergency fund with just a small amount, but just to get started. So we'll talk about that on our next uh, webinar, which is on Tuesday. I want to draw your attention also to the uh, spreadsheet that's listed here and the chart that, it, that, ex that examines the minimum unemployment benefits that we see. So weekly payments that unemployment recipients would get at a minimum uh, under the coronavirus relief bill. If you notice in this chart, the highest is actually the state of Massachusetts, which uh, provides $878, and then, again, this is on a weekly basis. However, if you look down, Louisiana is actually falling under the category of the lowest weekly minimum. Um, but Mississippi, at one of the 50 states, is at 707. They actually are still above what the minimum would be, and I think that's about 2,200% because the minimum starts is about $30 there, and then it moves up. But Louisiana, it comes in at 708. The average national weekly amount is roughly about $789 per week that's being paid out. So for those individuals who are receiving unemployment, Liz alluded to this earlier, some individuals are actually being able to uh, recoup a lot more when they also get the additional payments on, on top of this. So I want to share these charts with you as we begin our Q&A period. And so let's go to our next slide. So as part of the question and answer sec section here, I want to go back to you, Julia, because at the very end of your presentation, you were talking about the fact that people may have received an unemployment overpayment. And so if an individual is um, asking if they still qualify, the answer you gave was yes, but do they still get the additional $600 under the Federal CARES Act? Uh, no, as of right now, they will not be getting the additional $600. Um, so the, for, using someone receiving the maximum benefit amount of $247, um, that $247 will be um, posted to their account. However, they won't receive it. It'll just go directly to the unemployment. And our understanding of um, the Workforce Commission's interpretation in order to qualify for the extra $600, you must actually be receiving at least one dollar in weekly benefits regardless of it's whether state benefits or federal benefits in order to qualify for the ex extra six hundred dollars and so at this time the unemployment office is not um giving that extra six hundred dollars to anyone with overpayment because they aren't actually receiving their weekly benefits it's being applied towards the overpayment okay thank you for that Another question has come in, Mr. Lewis. Um, the question is, this person says, if you're, I'm self-employed, so how can I receive unemployment benefits? Am I eligible? So for those that may be self-employed, self again, although you may not qualify under regular state UI, you can potentially qualify for the pandemic unemployment assistance, which is the federal. And so, you would you should go ahead and apply through Louisiana Workforce Commission as you would for a regular UI. If they determine you do not qualify for regular UI, they will also look at your eligibility for the PUA or pandemic unemployment assistance. Okay, I see another question, Mr. Lewis. I'm going to stick with you for a moment. And the, I know that you spoke earlier. You're representing Employee BR in WIOA. Um, the question is, how can Employee BR help in terms of assistance with login or passwords if I have a problem? So if, if you're having problems with password or login, um, you can call Employee BR 225-358-4579. Uh, um, and we have some employees on hand that may be able to assist you with resetting your password. Um, 
if you call and don't get through, just give it a little time, call again. We, we are limited with the number of employees that are currently being able to assist with resetting passwords. Thank you. Actually, what you just said is one of the questions that I'm seeing here. Um, individual is saying, I've tried several times to call the unemployment number. Is it possible to go in and see someone during COVID or should I just keep trying? Julia, Mr. Mr. Lewis? So for, for, for my knowledge, Employee BR is currently closed to the public. So, you, so no one can come in and speak to someone. Everything is being handled either via phone or email. Uh, to my knowledge, that is the same with the Louisiana Workforce Commission. I don't believe that they're accepting anyone uh, in, from the public coming into their facilities. Uh, I could be wrong about LWC, but I know for sure that is what's happening at Employee BR. Julia? Oh, I, I, I wanted to, to respond. Yeah, I do believe that that is correct about um, the LWC being closed. Um, you will just have to um, continue to call, unfortunately. Everyone knows that there are high um, wait times, um, but the, the offices are open for it, not the offices and stuff, the phone lines are open for extended times now. I believe they're open until about 7 p.m. daily. Um, so it may just be a little easier to call um, earliest in the morning when they open at 8 or closer towards the evening when they close at 7. But to my knowledge, those offices are not open for anyone to physically come in. Okay, thank you. Liz, were you going to make a comment there? No, not about the call-in lines. We have received some guidance from the governor's office um, that says that if you are only interacting with the website, you may want to do that between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. because they uh, have also been overloaded on their site as well. That's great advice. So let me repeat that for everyone. You said 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., which is more of a, a downtime for the site. Okay, excellent. Dr. Jones, okay. If, if I may, I'd like to add that for individuals that are looking to do password uh, resets, uh, they can also email EmployBR at okay. EmployBR21. return those emails via call. Okay, excellent. Um, Liz, perhaps you may be able to address this question. It says, um, can my employees file a claim if they have COVID-19 and cannot come to work? Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> okay, so they would go through the same normal process, correct? That's, that's correct. Okay, thank you. The, the subsequent question to that is also, can my employees file for unemployment benefits if I reduce their hours because of the COVID-19? The answer to that is yes, too. Okay, excellent. Um, can I add on to that, though? Because um, we're, really? we're seeing a lot of these cases. A reduction in hours means that you can definitely apply. It does not guarantee that you will receive benefits because, again, anyone earning wages in excess of their weekly benefit amount will not be paid out wages. So you definitely should apply, but you will have to report those wages. And if you earn anything uh, over the weekly benefit amount, you won't be paid out for the, for the weekly benefit amount or the additional $600. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Julia, for clarifying that. Uh, the next question that we have, Julia, is actually for you. And what proof will I need to submit of my wages if I am an independent contractor or self-employed? Um, so right now, we haven't received anyone who's actually been turned down on the type of proof or actually submitting proof of the wages, but what we're recommending is that if you have any um, tax returns, any um, 
any check stubs, anything that you may have received that can show proof of payment for work done. Um, and if you don't have anything, any of those things, we can definitely assist with doing a self affidavit for your wages. And you can submit that to the unemployment office. Okay, great. Um, the next question, um, Mr. Lewis, if it, it states, I'm about to exhaust my regular unemployment benefits, is there any way to get my benefits extended? Is there any way to get my benefits extended? So, so the answer is yes. Uh, with the extended pandemic unemployment assistance uh, that falls uh, under the CARES Act, it, it does allow for those that have exhausted their regular UI to have their benefits extended for up to 13 weeks. I believe Ms. Julia Jack uh, mentioned during her presentation that they're not really sure how that application is being handled currently with LWC, but the provision is there for the extension. Right. LWC is just trying to figure out what well, the last that I, I spoke with them, they're trying to figure out, or they were, how to implement that portion. And so anyone, um, they, they may have a difficult time claiming the weekly certifications for that 13 weeks, but from my understanding, it is coming. Okay. This question is for Liz. Um, it's been noted on the presentation that unemployment benefits extend for 26 weeks. What do I do once the 26 weeks is exhausted? I don't actually have expertise in that. Hopefully one of the other panelists can help. Okay, thank you. Anyone of the panelists would like to touch on that? So uh, that's very similar to the previous question. Uh, again, it would be applying for that extended 13 weeks uh, through the extended uh, PUA uh, for benefits. Okay, thank you. The next question is, I have exhausted all of my state unemployment benefits. Do I qualify for federal benefits? This is for Julia. That that just goes back to the to the same 13 weeks. If they've exhausted the 13, uh, if they've exhausted the state benefits, they can apply for the additional 13 weeks under the Federal CARES Act. We're just waiting for the implementation of that by the Louisiana Workforce Commission. Perfect. Um, I have another question here, and it is in regards to information noted by Mr. Lewis. Um, you mentioned that the job search requirement is no longer necessary. Please explain. So, to the best of my understanding, when, when following your weekly certification prior to the pandemic, there was a requirement that you show that you've been uh, actively looking for work and had to provide, I'm not sure how many uh, jobs. Is it three, Ms. Julia? Three. To show that you've applied to at least three uh, jobs or uh, employers to work. Um, currently, uh, with the governor's uh, executive order, that requirement of showing proof that you've gone out and looked for work or applied to at least three uh, places of business has been suspended until further notice. Okay. So this question is a general question, but I'm going to plug in a different narrative for each audience. The question regards, what advice would you give, and Liz, I'll start with you, to a business owner who is losing, um, sorry, who is losing faith in the system right now due to COVID? What advice would you give to a business owner who is losing faith in the system due to COVID? Um, the advice that I would give is, is keep your chin up. I know it's really hard. Things are very, very tough right now. Uh, but Louisiana is a place of very resilient people and we have gone through really, really hard things in our recent past and our very long past history. Um, we will get through this. We will get to a place where our economy starts to rebound. Um, and we, uh, we, are, we have many ways to try and find a life preserver to keep us afloat until that time when the economy starts to rebound. 
I would encourage small business owners to reach out to your chambers of commerce, to reach out to to reach out to the Small Business Administration, the Small Business Development Centers at Southern University and at LSU. Seek help, seek mentorship, seek insight from others, talk through the concerns that you have, talk to your employees. Um, there, is, there is assistance out there. Find something that is going to help you move forward um, and, and please keep trying. Excellent, thank you. Mr. Lewis, what advice would you give, same question, but to a person who is currently unemployed? Well, first, first uh, piece of advice I would give is to definitely go ahead and file for your unemployment insurance benefits, uh, whether you do that via uh, online or, and if you're having uh, issues filing, uh, definitely seek the resources available for for assistance with with getting getting your application or your claim filed. Also, uh, if you are lo currently looking for work, um, you can check uh, uh, with. I know BRAC has their re recovery um, website available where they have uh, current businesses that are are actively searching uh, or seeking uh, individuals that would like to go to work during this pandemic. Um, so there are jobs available uh, for those that are, are seeking. So I, I would definitely say to utilize your online resources to uh, identify potential job opportunities. Also through Employee BR, we do assist uh, and, and with, with job and do our best to post job openings. We will have a, a Facebook page uh, available in the next few days where we'll be working to place resources our post resources on that Facebook page or uh, those that are looking for work resources, uh, information regarding LWC and unemployment, uh, all those things will be on the Facebook page once it, once it is up and running, uh, hopefully by uh, the, no later than the beginning of next week. Excellent, thank you. Julia, same question, but now the audience is to those who have been denied unemployment assistance and now they need to appeal what would you say to them um first thing just just in general i think right now persistence is key with everything um when you're trying to um get access to figure out why you've been denied um just because it can be frustrating when you have to wait um with these extremely long wait and hold times persistence is key um look at help um our office is here to help um we can definitely try to assist you with finding out why you've been on um, benefits um, making sure that you do not miss any appeal deadlines that are available to you because a part of being a, a persistent is utilizing the things that are available to you to make sure that you receive um, benefits don't be defeated a denial does not necessarily mean that you will not receive benefits um, you should appeal any denials just to make sure that you preserve your right to be heard. Um, and then, like I said, just contact uh, any of the resources that have been made available today for assistance. We're here to help. Um, Mr. Lewis's office is here to help. Um, and so um, Ms. Smith is here to help. And so you, you have the tools um, to get the type of help that you need. And so just make sure that you utilize those tools. I know it can be difficult um, when everyone is quarantining um, to try to keep a positive outlook on everything. Um, but persistence is really, is really key and try not to be defeated and utilize the tools that are here to help. Our hotline number, again, is 1-844-244-7871. And we're here to assist with any type of denials, any questions you may have. Excellent. Julia, I have to get this other question in. It's posed to you and it says, my job is closed due to COVID-19, but I'm still being paid. Can I apply for benefits? So oh, you can apply for benefits. However, everything is going to come down to reporting the, the, the wages that you're receiving from your employer. Um, if you're receiving wages from your employer in excess of any of your weekly benefit amount, then you won't receive benefits for that for that particular week, unfortunately. And so if, you're, if your employer is paying you, 
let's say, $600 a week, which may not even be as much as your normal pay, but if you're getting that $600 a week, you likely, likely would have had a determination of maybe the 247 weekly because that 600 is more than that 247 weekly, you will not have a payout. So everything is about um, the reporting, the reporting of the wages. Okay, great. Mr. Lewis, there was one final question, um, and it's regarding the retroactiveness. Will the $600 federal benefits be re retroactive? So to my understanding, it will be to the week ending April 4th, if, that's, if you filed your claim at that time. So if you filed a claim uh, week ending April 4th, once you start receiving your payouts, they, the $600 will be retro retroactive up until that point. Okay, great. So final question for, yeah, actually final statements, I should say, for each of the panelists. And that is closing thoughts on the state of unemployment in the city of Baton Rouge. Just final concluding comments that you would like to make. And I'll go ahead and start with you, Mr. Lewis. So, so as Ms. Smith mentioned, this, this is definitely a trying time in our state. Uh, again, I will focus on utilizing the resources that are available. Again, Employee VR is here to serve and to assist those that are in need. Um, not only can you reach us back home, but also uh, on our website at employeebr.com or via email at employeebr21, employeebr21 at brla.gov. Um, knowing, I, I hope that in the know that there are agencies and organizations uh, within the city that are here to assist, and, and we will do our best to help each and every one that comes before us. Ms. Julia, any final comments? Um, I just want to kind of reiterate that, again, persistence is key. Um, the weekly benefit amount, with, uh, in addition to the $600 um, that any claimant can potentially receive, um, it, it could definitely be enough money to keep everyone afloat um, during these trying times. So I just want everyone to focus on not being defeated and being uh, persistent and utilizing the tools and the agencies that are here to provide help to you all. Um, we want to make sure that everyone uh, can have a good understanding of how they can receive these benefits and what help is here uh, that's available to everyone. And so I just I just want to stress to not be not be, not feel defeated and just be persistent with trying to um, get the benefits that can assist you with keeping your family afloat during these trying times. Excellent, Liz, your comments. So first, let me thank uh, Mr. Lewis for talking about our BR Works page um, that is serving as a sort of community job board. We are updating that every day uh, and right now have 80 companies represented on that board who are hiring. Um, the only other thing I would say is, um, and it reiterates a lot of what you've heard, look for help, seek help. There's a lot of information and a lot of programs, a lot of funding, et cetera, that is available. Um, please visit our website, brac.org slash recovery to find um, how to help small businesses and all of the opportunities that are available to support small businesses during this very difficult time. Thank you, Liz. Uh, at this point, again, far too many people are facing these hardships and uh, I just want to stress that financial literacy is just one component of it and you all have truly shared many tools, many resources that are available for people to utilize. And I hope that our audience is truly taking notes. All of this information, of course, will be available on our website and posted. But we want to also stress to our audience that you can go back and watch this video if you need to see, pardon me, this webinar if you need to see the video that was embedded. But you also will have the information um, to be able to go to these sites that they've been sharing with you. If we could go to the next slide. <clears throat> I want to remind everyone of our April um, 
continuation of our series, which still has two more workshops. On April 28th, we will have creating a game plan for an emergency reserve. We also have on April 30th, assessing spending habits during COVID-19. And this really has everything to do with, with money management and this whole new normal that we keep hearing about, but how to handle your money, how to budget your funds during the COVID crisis. For those who will be participating, we ask you to please go and register online at brla.gov forward slash COVID workshop. You can also see a uh, Facebook streaming of our workshops. And we also have this on um, Metro 21. I want to reiterate that our, we can't do this. Uh, thank you to our partners who come in and share their time, share the information. This is all about educating the community on financial literacy and making sure that they have the, the information at hand. So I want to say thank you, Liz, to you and also to Adam. Uh, greatly appreciate your service on, on this webinar. Julia, thank you to you and to your organization. Um, Mr. Lewis, thank you. And I have a shameless plug for Employee BR. I ask individuals, whether you're a youth, whether you're an adult or a dislocated worker, um, be patient with us, but we have resources that are available and certainly will be available during the recovery process of our city. And so we want you to utilize Employee BR in any and every way that you can to, um, to find the help and the support that you need. Um, there's something that's, that I always share with individuals. It's a three Ps, and Julia, you mentioned one of them. It's to be uh, persistent, utilize perseverance, and then finally, add patience. And so I think for any individual that's face, facing financial crisis during this time, those three Ps are truly going to take you far. Again, be persistent, utilize perseverance, but also be patient. Thank you so much for being a part of our workshop number four. Again, we look forward to you all joining on workshop five and workshop six next week, Tuesday and Thursday. And again, all of these resources are available for you online. Thank you and stay healthy and safe. Take care.